hey, good morning to you. Um, I'm in Portugal still, central Portugal, um, out on this farm still. I think it's our last day here at this farm. I think we're heading to the ocean tomorrow. I'm really excited about that. I always love the ocean, but I really love these walks in the morning out here. Rarely ever do I see anybody on these roads. And if I do, they're just like sheep farmers or something. But anyhow, um, I was taking this time to pray because myself, like many of you, I'm sure, have moments in time when you're just worried or afraid of different things. And I kind of, as I was praying about that, I realized there's two major things I'm afraid of. And I share this with you because my guess is this is normal for people. Um, and, you know, maybe there's some solutions in here somewhere, so. <clears throat> but one of my fears is really, it's not of like spiders or killer clowns or anything like that. It's kind of the uncertainty of being able to provide, um, you know, provide for myself, provide for my family, um, be able to sustain, you know, be able to pay the bills, essentially. Um, it's always been my biggest worry, especially once I started having kids, I was constantly just thinking about it, constantly. And I remember even, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine about it once. And he looked at me and he said, you know, I don't know if I know anybody that's not worried about that. And I realized there's probably a lot of truth to that. <laughs> so I think that's a common worry. Um, but I do. And a lot of it was growing up in poverty. You know, my parents, they had really a poverty mindset. I could do a whole video on what that looks like, but a lot of it was like, I never had money to do stuff. You know, like if my friends went out and did something, I either couldn't go or I went and just watched them spend money. If that, you know, like I remember times going out to eat with friends. I think I'm hitting concrete, so I'm gonna turn back down. I remember times going out to eat with friends and <clears throat> like just sitting at the table, you know, not eating anything or just eating bread, you know, or chips or whatever they put on the table, you know. Um, or going, you know, like if there was a dance at school or something, you know, my parents never gave me money for that. So I'd have to just kind of get three dollars worth of change or whatever it costs to get in you know so I think when I started you know I just I hated that lifestyle <laughs> and you know so as I got older I just did you know, can't go back to that and the other part was uh, the second one is really kind of a fear of things I can't control um, that affect me or could potentially affect me or my family or just the world I love or the people I love. Things like wars, things like elections, uh, you know, those sort of things, the big things that you just kind of, you know, you turn on the TV and you just look at it, you're like, oh, I want to worry about that thing they're talking about there on the TV. And the reason I believe God brought these two things to my mind, and I believe that like even those things, sometimes I think, it's 
wild hogs out here, so I kind of got to be a little bit careful. <laughs> but even those things, um, you know, like when I was younger, I remember seeing a lot of things that I worried about. Like I remember like in seventh grade or something, that day after nuclear war movie came out, man, that movie scared the crud out of me. I think I worried about that for the next 10 years. And you get decades down the road and you think, well, what was, what was the point of all that worry, you know? Maybe it was worth it, maybe not, I don't know. But there's nothing I could do about it, that I know. And I share all this with you because, you know, looking back at those times I didn't have money or was worried, God was always with me, like he was always with me, like in all those moments. You know, sure, I had to scrounge up change to get into the middle school dance or whatever, but... But he provided, you know, he made sure it was there for me. You know, we still got in. My parents didn't help at all. You know, nobody helped. It was just me and him, you know, him just doing his thing as a great dad. And then I'm reminded that, you know, not only has he been providing for me my whole life, but, you know, there's moments in the Bible, like with Elijah, when he was fleeing, and God had a crow feed him, you know? Like a crow was feeding him, <laughs> bringing him meat twice a day. And I think, that'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> like, like to, you know, to know that that's who your dad is. Like, even if you have to flee from the, the king and go hide by a creek somewhere, he's still gonna take care of you. Like, he's still going to make sure you got food. Even if it's crows bringing you meat. You know, and honestly, if God told me crows were going to bring me meat twice a day and crows brought me meat twice a day, I'd find great joy in that thing for some reason. I'd probably take that over a fine restaurant. Just because I know where it's coming from, you know. And... uh that's just who he is, you know? He's a good provider. He's a good, good provider. And the other piece, just that... This whole idea of, you know, this election and, you know, the wars going on around the world and how close are we to being involved in those things. and You know, it, you just, you realize, well, wait a second. He is definitely in charge of that. Like, he's in charge of that stuff, too. You know, it's hard to wrap your head around the idea that he anoints the kings, that whoever the next president of the United States is going to be is going to be because God chose that person. And honestly, I know I just, I, just through prayer and my understanding of the world and the breaking of God's laws. I don't think he's going to give us somebody who's going to do good for us. I think he's going to give us somebody that we deserve, if that makes sense. Could be wrong. But either way, it's who he chose for us. And even in those terrible circumstances, it's always for his good. It's always for his good. Like even when Hitler was around, running Germany. Well, God anointed that king. Sorry, I know it's going to offend a lot of people, but he did. He anoints the kings, it's in his word. But what came out of it? Like he didn't talk him into doing those things like that. That was w wicked satanic devices causing all that. But he allowed it to happen and it brought about his kingdom, the advancement of his kingdom by establishing the nation of Israel. 
at the end. Uh, so there's so much good that comes out of that, that moment. So I just think that, you know, we, we have to accept what's going to happen and know it's from him and hang on for the ride, really. Um, hopefully it's a smooth ride, but if not, it's the ride he chose for us. Um, and his selection process is very good, especially when he has it in his heart to discipline. Um, you know, that's the other piece that I really accepted from my father is that he disciplines me perfectly. And sometimes it hurts to be disciplined, but it's perfect. Um, that I know. So in all that, I'm not necessarily comforted that nothing bad will ever happen. What I'm comforted in is that he's in charge and that I'll make it through. That I know. I definitely won't starve. And whatever horrible thing this world throws at, at me or, or just at humanity in general, um, I know he'll get me through. Like, I know he will. And there'll be some sort of purpose for it. Like, they'll, I don't know what that purpose will be, but it'll have it. On the other side of it, I'll think to myself, I hope I never go through that again, but thank God, like, even think about tribulation, you know, the rise of the Antichrist and his world army and the whole world just bowing down to him and just seeing that, like how horrifying that must be. <laughs> it's nice. There's a town about, I don't know, one mile that way? How's that spell, apparently? So, um, I don't know, well, it could be a farm bell. Uh, that's how we got in the gates of this farm, was had to ring a big, giant bell. Sounded a lot like that, actually. So, anyhow, I just think that, you know, no matter how terrible things get, no matter how terrible things get, It's gonna be okay. Because even when you go through tribulation, you know, the rise of the Antichrist, well, no matter how terrifying that must be to watch, you know that it's the event, like, it looks like he's winning and how that hurts your heart. You know, like, how are people voting for this people? You know, how are people worshiping this guy? <laughs> Like, how are they even giving him authority at all? Like, with all that kind of relieves you scratch your head. And you're angry at the world. And none of it makes sense. And the next thing you know, you're an outlaw. And maybe you're sitting by a creek and crows are feeding you. <laughs> the beautiful thing about that is that that's, that just points towards the advancement of his kingdom. Well, his kingdom's coming here on earth. Like, how beautiful will that be? How beautiful will that be to be a part of that kingdom with Christ reigning here, literally? And you could still go to the farms of Portugal. <laughs> There's just no need of anything, you know? I don't know. It's really, I think it's just special to know that about him and I, I, I don't know I recommend you know that about him too because it gives me great comfort you know knowing I don't gotta worry about anything you know um, I do <laughs> that's obviously easier said than done but there's times when I worry about provision let's say and my wife will remind me, well, do you trust God? And I'm like, oh yeah. Well, what she means by that is, do you trust him? I'm like, really? And, it, and, I, and I do. 
so I stop, you know, and I'm okay in that moment. So there you go. I uh, hope this helped you, helped me. <laughs>